Hi everyone, so I'm back. I haven't left YouTube, although I haven't filmed for a little while. So um, in today's Friday Sews, I'm gonna catch you up a little bit on why I've been away and let you know about all the sewing related activity I've got up to while I've been gone. Uh, and I also thought you might find it interesting to see how I pack um, my sewing things to take away with me if I go to visit anyone else in the UK. So if that interests you, um, please stay tuned. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name's Laura and I'm the Carpe Diem Stitcher. So yes, I'm back, I'm real, I do exist. Um, I'm sorry it's been so long since I last filmed a video. I think it's probably about two and a half months. So a huge thank you to all my lovely subscribers who've stayed with me and been patient over that time. Um, I'm not gonna say too much about why I've been gone, but in a nutshell, a close family member of mine had to have um, an emergency operation and um, so I went up um, to be near them um, after, while they had the operation and in the aftermath and then sadly they um, died a few weeks later and so um, I stayed up in the area and um, helped to sort out the funeral arrangements and in the end ended up staying there until after the funeral which was last week so I came home last weekend um, so that's why I haven't filmed um, I I'm not going to say any more than that because although it's my choice to put my life on YouTube it's not um, necessarily going to be what my family members would want in terms of me talking about them so I'm going to respect their privacy and leave it at that and I hope you understand um, the other thing I should just mention quickly, um, thank you for all the lovely messages about my breast cancer journey on my last video and I'll pop a link down below. And I mentioned I was going for a mammogram um, and I, or I'd just been for one at the time I was filming. And while I was away, I got the news that uh, the mammogram showed no cause for concern. So um, that's reassuring. And thank you to everybody for your lovely comments on that video. I was very touched by them and I really appreciate um, your concern on that. And I'm um, really glad that I did that and hopefully it raised some awareness. So on with this week's vlog. Um, this is going to be a Friday Sews. And if you don't already know, uh, Friday Sews was the brainchild of Jen from Today in Jen's Sewing Room. And I'll put a link to her channel down here. Um, and the idea is that it's a hashtag um, that people can follow where sewists talk about um, what they've been up to um, in sewing in a kind of chatty style and a little bit of a life update as well. So what I thought I'd do first is show you a little bit of what I've got up to. There hasn't been a huge amount of sewing, as you might imagine, uh, but there has been a little bit because I did take some sewing things with me. Um, there's also been a few purchases. And then what I thought I'd do at the end is when I came home and I unpacked um, the sewing things I got with me, I took a little bit of footage of me unpacking my sewing machine case so you can see just how much I fit in it. So I'll pop that footage in at the end because I thought you might find that helpful to see just how much I can get in um, the bag when I go. So hopefully that interests you and let's get started. So the first thing I wanted to show you is um, some sewing that I had done or was doing just before I went away. So I have pretty much finished. This was, um, you might remember me talking um, when I did, um, I was going to participate in Selfless Sew April. So I got slightly delayed on that. Um, but I said I was going to sew some clothes for um, some new babies. Um, for members of our team and so I've got one set um, very nearly finished and ready to go so I thought I'd better show these to you now so that I can give them to the recipient. So you'll see this is made out of the same fabric as I made the um, pyjamas for my aunt in earlier in the year and this is the Brindle and Twig um, Ringer Tea. 
So you see, just got um, yellow um, ribbing on it, and it's it's done with um, multicolored overlocker thread, which I think makes it look really pretty. So that's the t-shirt, and this is in um, eighteen months to twenty-four months size. And then this is um, the petite pegs pattern from um, Patterns for Pirates. And I think it's this pair where I had to do a bit of fiddling with the size um, to try and get an appropriate size. And you'll see I've just got a few ends to finish off um, just where I've done round the, round the um, bottoms of the legs where I've hemmed them. So I just need to get those done and then those can go off. So that's those. But I think they're really cute. Uh, I've got a couple of other things to sew up. I've got another set very similar to this, I think. And then I've got a T-shirt for an older child. Because I think I said because of lockdown, we'd not been able to um, give gifts to these children. So I hadn't had a chance to sew for them. So... So you might remember in a previous video that I said that I was going to make um, some shirt dresses and I will pop a link to that video down below. And one of the um, dresses I said I was going to make was the Alex dress, um, which is in one of the ebooks from So Over It. It's the, I think it's the City Break one. And um, I have actually made a good start on that. Um, you see, it's pretty much done. Um, I'll do a full, I'll do a full review of it um, and show you this properly when it's finished. But you'll see, I'm now, I'm now at the point. I'm just about to put some bias binding on it on the hem. I've got specky seamstress bias binding, and then all I've got left to do is the buttonholes and buttons, which is great. Um, so hopefully I will get that done and be able to show you very soon. I'm hoping to finish that either later today or this weekend. It's, I am actually filming on Friday, 5th of August. So hoping to get this up today. I've had yesterday and today off, which has been lovely. And I'll get to the reason I had yesterday off in a minute. So that's the sewing that's gone on. Um... You might also remember that one of the other shirt dresses I wanted to make was for an engagement party and I was going to make the um, Tilda dress um, by Atelier Jupe and I'll pop a picture up here to remind you. And I was going to do a practice version and then do a, um, a full version of the real thing with this um, Lady McElroy fabric. Um, and you'll see I was trying, this is literally just before I went away, so I knew I was going away um, up to my relatives and I was trying to work out if I could take this with me and I was trying to do some practice to see if I could stay stitch and I was having real trouble with puckering and things. So that's cut out and ready to go and it's on the sewing table behind me but it didn't come with me because I was too worried that I was going to mess it up and obviously it's expensive fabric so I didn't take it with me in the end but while I was away I did some looking up of um, how to stay stitch on viscose because I'd not sewn with viscose before and um, Lauren from Guthrie and Garney was talking about using um, forming tape interfacing this stuff which you can get in charcoal and in white. So I ordered some of this while I was away. So it was waiting for me when I came back. And essentially you iron it on and it has got, if this will focus, a little chain stitch down the center. And what you do is you sew in that chain stitch and that should, fingers crossed, I'm gonna have a practice before I do it for real, um, make it easier to stay stitch the fabric. So I'm going to give that a go. So um, the other thing that arrived just before I came away, but I don't think I'd had the chance to show you, are these buttons from Pigeon Wishes, which I got to go with um, the rainbow fabric because I think it will go really nicely with the blue and orange. So that's that dress. In fact, in the end, I 
didn't go to the engagement party anyway. Um, my relative by this time was, was really too poorly, so I, I didn't go. Um, but I've still got the dress to make. I shall still make it and wear it and love it for a special occasion. But sadly, I couldn't go to the engagement party, although um, the family concerned were really understanding, obviously. But yeah, so got those. Just thought I'd mention that. And then, um, again, if you follow me on Instagram, and I, I think I mentioned earlier, I did manage still to go to the Sewing for Pleasure show at the NEC, which was at the end of June, I think. Towards the end of June, yeah. So, um, went down there, met my friend, met my friend in Birmingham, and um, didn't buy a whole lot. I was pretty restrained, and um, but I did buy this viscose which I have seen online and you can get it from Pound Fabrics and Jenny Stitches also has it and I've hummed and hard and hesitated about it before um, and not bought it online but I took the plunge and I bought it at um, the show so I really like it I really like the colour um not too sure what I'm going to make with it yet. I have a feeling I've got two and a half metres of it. I can't quite remember. Um, I'll check and pop down below how much I've got. Um, but yeah, so you can get that online and I'll pop the links if you like it. It did come in other colourways as well. So Pound Fabrics had it in a, a green and then kind of like an icy blue green and a mustard. And I think can't remember which ones they've got available I'm pretty sure the the green and the icy blue green have gone and it might be just the mustard and possibly this and Jenny Stitches just has this colorway but anyway that is that one so looking forward at some point to making something with that so that was the only fabric I got from the show and the only other things I got were got this cute little badge because I collect pin on badges anyway so it's more of a brooch really just a little tiny sewing machine with a heart on it so I've got that and then I got a couple of handbags one I can't show you because it is it was a gift for a family member and they've now got it and I got this blue one for me which is just you know kind of one for nipping out to the shops or going out at night doesn't hold a huge amount you know enough for a person car keys and door keys although I keep my keys on enormous pom-poms and that proves a bit of a problem when you've got a tiny handbag and a phone and quite a big purse so I need to have a bit of a fiddle around to um, make sure I can fit everything in but I do like it I think it's quite a nice colour goes quite nicely with the new fabric so I got that so I was pretty restrained, really, I think, for me. OK, so that was sewing for pleasure. And then I've got a few other bits and pieces to show you. And then I'll move on and talk about the um, sewing case that I packed for um, going away. So um, one thing I picked up while I was away, um, because I was with a family member who wanted to buy a torch, and we found... Um, quite a good half price torch in a garden center and it was the same make as this it was by Decton and I just happened to spot this um it was it was in with the torches and it was just kind of hidden away on a shelf gathering dust and it was half price and it's called a Decton Pro Light and it's a kind of daylight lamp so I don't think it's a daylight lamp in the sense of the ones that you can use to improve your mood I don't think it's meant to be like that but it's intended just to give you, rather than a spotlight, a kind of good general light. And I thought that might be quite useful for my sewing room. So I'm sitting in here now. I've actually only got the main light on. I've also got some spotlights and things on, which I, um, which I can put on, but I haven't got on. But I thought this might be quite nice for when it gets gloomy. So I'm going to try not to blind you. I'm going to try and put the light on over here and see if we can see. But it does make... I had it on yesterday. If I can do it without dislocating my arm. And see if I can switch it on. There we go. You can see it is quite... It's 
quite bright. I'm holding it over there. So you can see if you can get it in a position where it's not going to cast too many shadows, that should be quite nice rather than just having to peer into just a little illuminated area from a spotlight. So I'll see how it goes, but it was really cheap because of the half price. Um, so I thought it was worth giving it a go. So I got that. And then I've got, um, what have I got left to show you? I've got a few patterns to show you and a couple more pieces of fabric. So let's do the patterns first. So while I was away, I was um, still watching Instagram, even though I wasn't posting on it. And I saw a post by Jill, who's the um, at the one arm sewist, who was also on Sewing Bee last time round. And she'd posted a picture of herself wearing a version of this new look pattern. And it is new look 6301. And it's just a knit wrap dress, but I really like the version she had on. And I quite like wrap dresses, so I thought I would give that a go, particularly because there was a sale on New Look at the time. So I picked that up for really low price, probably about £3 something. Um, so because um, also I got it from Minerva and I'm in the Minerva Craft Club. So by the time I got the half price and then the 10% discount, um, that worked really well. So I've got that. Not sure when I'll get round to making it, probably over the winter. Uh, but I bought that because I thought since it's reduced anyway at the minute, it would be a good one to have in my stash. So I got that. Um, and then I've got two Prima patterns to show you, um, which, you know, I get I get given by um, a friend of my mother's. So... This is the uh, this is the August one, so this is the most recent. So this is um, kind of kaftan style. Um, so you can either make it in the top form or the um, the kind of kaftan. So I think if I did that one, I'd be more likely to do I'd be more likely to do the top. I think that's probably more practical for my lifestyle. I don't think it's going to go rushing to the top of my make list for this year. Um, I don't think I'm likely to go on a summer holiday anywhere particularly hot at the minute. Although, obviously, here we keep having heat waves, so I'm not saying it wouldn't come in useful, but I think I'm less likely to make that one at the minute. So that was the second one. And the first one um, was this one, which was the July edition of Prima. So you can subscribe for these patterns um and that's so that's the second one which is um kind of shirt dress which is ironic given that i keep making shirt dresses at the moment so i do think that's quite pretty um so maybe that's something i might make um at some point in the future maybe next summer so i've got that um and if you've been watching me for a while, you'll know that I quite like Birda magazine and I have got plans to make a T-shirt from one of the previous editions and I've got fabric to do it. And then again, that was something that's just not happened because of having to go away. Um, but where I was for some reason, um, I just couldn't seem to get hold of Birda. So I got my fix when I got home um, and... Um, went into my local shop which I know has it and sure enough they had it and I have now got the which edition is this this is the August 2022 birder so it's that one so I quite like the wide leg trousers on the front um but the thing that really decided me to buy it were was that top which has got a kind of sew along with it but I really like the neckline on that I think it's a kind of quite elevated version of a basic long sleeve tee so I thought I'd have a go at that um, and I've got some fabric in mind to actually do that with as well um, so there was that and there's also this dress which has just got a little tiny cut out there so it kind of gives the effect of a two-piece but actually isn't and I thought that was um, really quite pretty and quite clever 
So um, they were the two that stood out for me, but I haven't yet had a chance to go through and have a full look at it. But um, yeah, so that's um, the birder, the latest birder that I've got hold of. So I'm looking forward to spending a bit more time with that. And then the last two bits that I've got to show you, I only bought yesterday. Um, so this is, I bought a few notions as well, but I won't worry about them. But yesterday um, was my birthday. Yay! So I um, took yesterday off from work and also today so that I could have a bit of a long weekend and also get a bit of R&R &R after my um, nearly eight weeks away, seven and a half weeks away from home. So what did I buy? I bought um, some lining material. This is just plain cotton um, for my husband's shorts that I'm going to make him, um, which are the Minion shorts. I think I showed you the fabric earlier, but I'll pop a picture up there uh, and I'll pop details of the pattern I'm going to use down below. And I also got the zip um, so that I can make those for him. Uh, but I hadn't been able to start even if I'd been here, I couldn't have started because I hadn't got any lining fabric. So I got that. And then the other thing that I got was this beautiful viscose. So the shop I went to was a shop called Koala Creations and they are online and they're in Chipping Sodbury. So although I live in South Wales, it wasn't too far for me to go. Um, so my husband and I just kind of made a day of it, went over, had some lunch and I went in the fabric shop uh, and they had a really good range but I was very good because I am trying to sew through my stash, not very successfully because I keep buying fabric, um, but I've got a lot of things cut out and I really do need to kind of get on and get things sewn up. But I bought this um, for a specific purpose, so I'll show you the fabric first. It is just a really bright floral viscose uh, and I just think it's really pretty lots of bright jewel coloured um, tones in it very much me I think there's not a huge amount of yellow in it I might just have got that upside down I can't quite decide if it's directional or not um, but I just saw it I saw it online and just really really liked it and wanted somewhere to go for my birthday so I said let's go to Chipping Sodbury and buy fabric because why not so that's what we did so that's the fabric so the reason I want it is that while I was away um, I tried on a blouse belonging to a relative and I really really liked it and this was um a ready-to-wear blouse from Fat Face uh, and I took a picture of it and I'll just pop it up here. Um, I really liked it. It's got kind of round neck and actually you can't see it very well on the photo but then it, it's got a kind of notch, you know, like an open neck and then the buttons start probably about there, maybe. So I'm actually quite happy with um, a rounder neck so what I wanted to do and the reason I got the fabric was to try to more or less recreate that look. Um, and the pattern that I'm going to use to do this is the, and I'll try and put a picture in here, is the chalk and notch wren blouse and dress, which as I say, that's got buttons right up to the top. It's got a scoop neck and it's buttoned right up to the top. But I don't mind that, um, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, but I thought that the sleeves on that actually are a pretty close match for the um, the sleeves on the fat face. I'll try and put pictures side by side so you can see. Um, so that's the plan. So yeah, that's what that's what I'm intending to do with this fabric. And hopefully I'll get that done in time for me to be able to wear it in the um, in the autumn, even with a cardigan over it, because I do think it's pretty. And I think it's got enough kind of variety of colour in it that it's not just hugely summery. I think, you know, you've got the reds and the, the sort of oranges and things. So I think that will go into autumn quite happily. So that was that piece of fabric and that was the only fabric I bought. I bought some elastic to go in the sleeves for this as well because I'm going to do the short sleeve version. Um, and that was it. I did buy one or bring home with me one or two other things that I will show you at a later date because 
there's going to be I think an upcycling challenge on Instagram later in the year and they're much more related to that so I'll show you those at the time when I get into thinking about what I might make for that. So that catches you up on everything that I've bought. Uh, my plan really now, as I say, is to get my head down and get on with sewing up the things I've got cut out to make. So that's two more lots of children's clothes. There's the tilde dress that um, I want to make up that's already cut out, and ready to go. Now I've got the um, iron on thing to do the um, stay stitching and that literally I'm sitting looking at it it's on my cutting table and, and actually cut out and ready um, and then I've also got um, a t-shirt for my husband which is cut out because that was going to be um, something that I was going to make for the sewing for men challenge in June and of course I'm sewing t-shirts um, the sew joey challenge but I didn't get that done either because again because I was away and everything kind of went slightly downhill um, so yeah, so that's what I've been up to. So the only other thing I wanted to do today was to talk about, um, what I can take with me when I go, um, away. So I'll pop in pictures of two small carry cases I've got, both of which will take my overlocker. Um, and I will leave links to those down below. The bigger one of the two, the kind of denim look one, which I'll put a picture of in here, is by Prim. And um, that's a wheelie trolley and it's got a drop down front bit so you can put in things like scissors and things. So that's um, quite capacious. And the other one is much smaller. It's a carry case. Um, really, it's not on wheels. And I'll put details of that in as well down below. But my main one um, that I take with me is is a really big one and that's because I've got a really big sewing machine. I've got a Janemi Atelier 7 and I really struggled to get an, um, a case for it. So, uh, But once I did, I found that I can get a huge amount in it. So I will just um, now pause this and insert the video that I took when I unpacked it. So here we go. So if I start off at um, the front down here, you've got a zip-up compartment. So if I can keep my head out of the way, it just opens up like that. And that is a Prima pattern which came while I was away. So I will show you that another time along with the other one that I've got. And then I've also got in here a... Um, plastic wallet with um, all the notions and cutout fabric for my shirt mashup that I keep saying I'm going to do and that I thought I might get time to do um, this month and just haven't so that didn't happen as I say I didn't actually in the end get a whole lot of sewing done but that's what was in there and I didn't have anything else in the front compartment so that's the front and then this is the main section. So it comes open like that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out everything I've got in here apart from the actual sewing machine because A that's heavy, um, B it's a sewing machine and nobody needs to see me unpack a sewing machine out of um, a trolley. So this is um, just an offcut of fabric. So this is the fabric that I was making my um, sew over it Alex shirt dress in. So that is um, a spare piece of fabric and I put it in because I hadn't cut out belt ties or, or rather the, the, the to make a self fabric belt. I hadn't cut anything out before I um, left to go away. So I threw it in just in case that's what I wanted to do. Although really I think I'd still rather purchase something like a leather belt to go with it. But I put it in just in case. So that's that. Next we've got, um, and this was the only sewing that I did while I was away, we've got an almost completed um, Alex shirt dress that you can see here. So that was just um, put in the top. So that's that. That's all my pattern pieces and things that I have been using for the Alex dress. And then I have got another 
two, three plastic wallets. You can see I've been really ambitious. Um, and some of this came up, so this is um, my children's clothes, the t-shirts that I'm going to do, and a t-shirt for my husband, which I talked about before. Because um, when I first went, I didn't have my overlocker with me, and then I got my husband to drop. Um, we met at one point when I went to the um, Sewing for Pleasure show, and he um, gave me my overlocker, and then because of what happened, I didn't touch it in the end. But I had all that lot, so they all fitted in there. This is a, oops, can you see that? There you go. Uh, so this is just a little bag that I keep my, um, usually just keep my sewing machine accessories in, but because I was away, I've thrown in various other things like little scissors, um, my marker, my um, little sewing ruler. Um, I've got my tape measure in there. I've got a needle case in there. So that just dropped in as it was. So that's that. I've got my pressing cloth. So that's there. That. I've got my tailor's ham. I did mean to take my sleeve ham, which I've now found, of course, since I came back, but couldn't find at all before I went. But it's actually on the floor down there. I've got my um, presser, uh, my, my clapper rather, with the um, pointy bit for um, pressing out collar. Um, because I was going to be making shirts and shirt dresses, as I thought. So I've got that with me. And that was all just kind of dropped in, loose in the top, because there's quite a lot of space, you can see. There's the sewing machine, bits of space there. There is actually what looks like a zip compartment there as well. Yes, it is. It's a zip compartment. It kind of goes into the back of the case, but that's fine. So if you wanted to put things there, you could. Um, and there's also another zipper there, but that's really got the padding. You can see the padding for the case, and I think it's quite useful. But you've got that, just gives it that bit more protection. And then it's the same on the other side. So this is now coming out of the neck compartment on the other side. So I've got the foot pedal for the machine. This is my mini iron and the little water thing, so you can just see, I won't take it out, but that's the mini mini iron that I've got to, you can't see very well, but there it is, um, to press my seams. So I took that with me. I also took my little tiny ironing board that I've got separately. I took my um, one set of my generate seam circles that I showed you, I think last time, last video. Um, I took my, this is, it looks like a box of beeswax products, but it's not, it's actually got my labels in. So I took that. My little box of wonder clips. So, I'll try and link those down below because I think they're really useful and you get a nice, quite a large number of those, so I find those really useful. Took those. Also took my pins on my little hedgehog pin cushion. My sewing machine instruction book because sometimes I forget how to do things and particularly when I'm doing buttonholes which was the plan so got my sewing machine instruction book my um, dressmaking scissors fabric scissors the cable for my sewing machine power cable bias binding excuse the rustling, because I am going to um, 
use that bias binding to do the um, hem on that shirt dress that I just showed you. That's bias tape from this Becky Seamstress, so I'll link her down below. What else? Um, my pinking shears that I've got. My Simflex seam gauge, which um, I use when I'm making buttonholes because it's really easy to make sure that you've got them all equidistant. So I tend to decide where I want the one um, at the, the point that's going to come under most strain around my chest and then I'll just do all the others um, based on that. So I've got my seam gauge, I've got um, the kind of ruler with a tailor's curve on it. Of course I'm packing this, I'm now wondering why on earth I need, thought I needed it all. That's the base for my mini iron, the rubber base. And my hem gauge. So you can use that just for pressing up hems. So that's all I got in it, I think. But it's quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah, so that's everything I had in it. And then the only other thing that's left in there is my actual sewing machine. But I think this is a real TARDIS. So I think it was well worth the money. It's um, 64.99 now, I think, on um, online, um, at Sewing Online. But I think if you travel with your sewing machine on any kind of a regular basis, and I've used it, I think, three times now, um, it's really worth it because it protects your sewing machine and particularly if you've got a bigger model and you're struggling to find one that will fit. So yeah, as you can see, I can fit a huge amount into that case and it has been really, really useful when I've used it to go away. I've used it three or four times now and it's really helpful, so that's great. So it's really nice to be back again and um, I really hope you enjoyed um, catching up with where I've been up to. So hopefully I'll have a few more things to show you next time and the tour of the sewing room is coming. Obviously I've been away and I'm trying to get sorted out but the tour of the sewing room is coming. A lot of you said you would like that so I will do that for you. Um, and yes, yeah, so if you like this video please don't forget to give me a thumbs up because that tells YouTube that you're enjoying my content and gets it out to other people and also um, if you um, have enjoyed this and you want to hear more from me then please do subscribe and click that little notification bell which I think is down that side um, and that will alert you to when I uh, put out more content um, and finally please do keep the comments coming I do try to reply to everyone I think there's a couple outstanding from my previous video which I will reply to and it was around that time that I got overtaken by events and um, my relative died and I just didn't really particularly feel like coming on YouTube or doing anything. I did keep thinking I should put a short video up to explain what had happened and then couldn't quite face it. So I'm sorry about that, uh, but I'm back now uh, and I'm really keen to keep this positive place going forward. So I'm looking forward to getting stuck in and to engaging with you all more in the future. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. Hope you get some sewing in. Bye for now.